Welcome back to the channel where we'll be going through the Mesh-tastic first time setup for Android. I've got one of my older phones. I'm going into the Play Store and looking up for the Mesh-tastic app. Once I've gone through and found it, I'm going to go through and install or update it if you already have it installed. And this might take a couple minutes. Doesn't require any special permissions as of time of recording, which is July 14th of 2023. We'll give this a minute or two, and then the next thing that we're going to want to make sure is make sure the Bluetooth is turned on, because that's how your phone is going to talk with your badge. From there, once it's, it's going to go through and say, hey, if there's something new, do you want to go through and connect to it? Depending on if you've already connected to this device before, including if you've updated the firmware, you may need to forget it from your device to be able to pair it correctly. But once we've loaded up into Mesh Tastic for the first time, we're going to click that gear in the top right hand side. And if everything's working correctly, hey, everything should show up here. But we're going to assume this is a brand new badge and show you what you need to do to make sure this is set up correctly. You can also uncheck this box for providing location to Mesh, which actually uses your GPS for your phone and passes it through. So. Starting brand new, we're going to actually click the pair and connect, and we're going to type in the current PIN number that's on your badge from inside of the Mesh-tastic app. From there, if everything's working correctly, right now there's the cloud on the top right hand side of your screen that doesn't show any connectivity. It will go through if this is a brand new install and still have that cloud with the line slash through it. It says, hey, I'm trying to connect click to connect again and then once it has paired correctly it's gonna go through and start giving you a number on counting up for this device so this was a, a small crash so I went through and said okay well, what's going on let's go into our phone make sure that we've forgotten all the devices went to Bluetooth and then I'd gone through and cleared out and forgot that device from there again it's constantly popping up and asking hey what's going on if you've paired with this before go back into the Meshtastic app and then I was able to just like swipe side swipe and then this time around it worked just fine I was able to then type in my pin that's again shown on screen which is randomly generated every single time and then when this is working correctly this is what it's going to look like with the pairing complete starting services but you first must set a region so you need to click the region go down to the drop down you have to start with this step first so you're going to select us this is going to be using the 915 megahertz radio that's what the radio antenna is tuned for our badges here in the states you can go through and uh, rename your device. We're gonna say set that a little bit for later on. At this module config, uh, one through 10, it goes through a quick run and we've got it up and running correctly. So this is where you could go through and rename your, your badge. I am working off of this older school Pixel 5, so that's what I'm gonna rename the device. And we can see that in that top right hand corner, we've got a cloud with a checkbox now because it is working correctly. Anytime that you set the region or rename the device, it's going to reboot. This is normal. Once it comes back up, you should now see the region in the top left hand side of your badge. It'll say US and give us a second to reconnect your Bluetooth. And hey, check that out. It saved the Pixel 5. We're now connected to it, and this is our first step of actually connecting the badge. Let's go into some of the features and using the app a little bit more. So you can provide the GPS from your phone to the mesh. I'm gonna click it unclick or unchecked for now, and we're going to go to the public facing broadcasting channel. So this is going to be the one that's built in called Long Fast that everybody else can go through and see by default on Meshtastic if they're in your local area. And I've grabbed another device and it says, hey, Pixel 5 test. So I was able to successfully send that to the public channel. So 
I'm gonna grab one other device over here and then show a couple different setups here on where you go through and message. We can actually go through and see the public text here on the long fast channel and it pops up on both the blue badge and the yellow badge being sent from my green badge. Now, that's all cool and dandy, but what if I want to go through and send an individual text? Here's the cool part. I've actually gone through and blurred out the GPS um, fix for both the I yellow iPad and for the Pixel 5. We're gonna specifically message the iPad yellow badge and just do a private text, which is encrypted from my green badge to the yellow badge. And we can actually see it up Dated to where it says private text on the yellow, but on the blue, it still says public text. Okay, cool. So I go tap over here on my iPad and I get a message back from my yellow badge over to the green badge and my device says hello, but that was to the public channel. So the green badge and the blue badge both got that. It's not in this iPad yellow private text. So then I go through, go to the right channel on the iPad yellow and send it from yellow to green back as a response. And we can still see the blue badge says hello, but then as I hit send on the iPad, it'll go through and come back with the response. Hey, okay, private text back from the yellow to the green, but you can see the blue still says just hello. So that gives you a quick introduction on how you can go through and individually message different badges. There are a lot of different settings you can go through and change on the Mestastic side of the house. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna click these three dots in the top right hand corner. You can go to the radio configuration and there's a lot of different settings. So you can go through and change the name for the long name or the short name of your device. You can go through and change the different channels and you can have many different channels going on. The one that's built in by default is long fast. We will have more during the conference. The client role, you can also do this, this drop down to where you have router, router client, repeater, tracker, etc., or have a sensor as well. And all the changes and pins, including being able to change what the buttons go through and do. On power, we can go through and say enable power savings mode. So if you want to be able to save power, these are all tweakable. Position wise, there is if you want to be able to start to have the smart position enabled. I'm going to go through and turn these off just because that's my preference. If you want to share your GPS location, say this is for your hometown or you want to be able to share where you're at, you can actually change how often it's also intervally broadcasting that out. By default, it's 900 seconds. So we've gone through position, we've gone through power. Let's go down to, and after we made that change, obviously the device is gonna need to reboot. So once it's been rebooted, it's gonna take a second to reconnect. And let's go down to network. This one's especially cool because you can actually hook up to Wi-Fi and have an Arsys log server, have ethernet enabled, DHCP. Now. If you turn on the Wi-Fi setting, it's going to turn off Bluetooth. So you'll no longer be able to connect from your phone without a brand new flash to your device. But if you wanted to be able to have one always on your network, you could absolutely set it up to where it's on your SSID, put in the password, and then you can go to it via a web GUI, which digital actually went through on our live stream. If there's interest in that, I can go through and do a deep dive there as well. You can go through and change the display settings on what's cycling through, or if you want to keep certain items on the screen. If you've got other special screens, you can go through and swap those out as well. And if you have special color screens, and then furthermore, you've also got your Bluetooth settings to where if you wanted to set random pins every single time or a fixed pin, that's an option. And then down here, later for another quest is the MQTT server settings. This is the default as the test, if you will. This is where you'll go through and change that to be able to connect to the different darknet MQTT servers. Or if you're coming across this video for another MQTT service, you'll need to put in your information there. Cool thing is they've also gone through and updated this to where you can actually remotely reboot things. And this had a lot of updates to the app in the last couple 
weeks and months that I've gone through and been working with this. So this is all as of July 14th of 2023. I hope that you found this helpful. Like, subscribe. I'll look forward to seeing your guys' badges and your customizations and hope that you found this video helpful. We'll see you online and at DEFCON.